Hello and welcome to Colombia Threnidal Investments. It's been two months since Britain's EU referendum vote. Are things worse or better? In the US, the election looms and the pace is picking up. Now I'm here with William Davies to discuss this and more. Hi, William. It's good to see you again. Hi there. Uh, now, it's been two months since we've had the UK-EU's referendum vote. What's been happening in the investment world? Well, there was an awful lot of nervousness as a result of that uh, referendum vote. Uh, but actually, I mean, equity markets have been relatively strong uh, mm. uh, over that period. We've seen the UK equity market, where there's probably most fear, uh, rise by some 10%. Uh, but in currency worlds, it, in the currency world, it's been a slightly different story. We've seen uh, sterling fall by about 10% uh, against the dollar and also against the euro. But actually, things have continued along pretty calmly um, uh, since the vote. Well, it's now approaching two months until the US election. However, with the Trump-Clinton TV debates now close upon us, what is your view on the outcome of the US elections? I mean, you're right. The TV debates, uh, they start in September. Mm. And so is that when the knives really come out? If we look at the likely outcome now, polls would have uh, Mrs. Clinton um, ahead um, and Mr. Trump lagging. So our base view mm. would be that Hillary Clinton uh, will win the election. However, importantly, if we look at Congress, we think that the Republicans are most likely uh, to keep their majority uh, within the Senate and probably the House of representatives as well. So although Clinton may be president, she may not have as much power as she would wish because she won't have control um, over Congress. Conversely, were Trump to win, it may well be that the Republicans continue to have control over uh, Congress and mm. so he may actually be uh, a president with more power than Mrs. Clinton um, could be. So the most likely outcome, Clinton victory, but without as much power as she may wish, uh, the less likely out outcome, Trump victory, but he would, the Republicans would have control over uh, Congress were he to. Now, if we're looking at the implications for the investors in the investors world, um, what are they? Well, I guess one of the things we've, uh, uh, we've understood from Mr. Trump as he's gone through the uh, campaign is that he's a little bit unpredictable. But let's look at some of the, uh, the core things which he would, uh, which he would propose. Mm. Uh, lower taxes um, on business, um, less regulation. Mm -hmm. So if anything, we expect with Trump uh, for there to be uh, stronger growth as we move forward. Although the thing which would uh, argue against that is that obviously he is a bit more isolationist. But our base case, which is Mrs. Clinton, is one of a more balanced uh, fiscal um, outlook. Mm -hmm. But because she is unlikely to get power in Congress, we think it's unlikely that uh, any impact she will have will be as dramatic as, uh, as some may fear. This year, bond yields have gone ever lower. What is your view on the path of interest rates around the world? Well, we're in that kind of weird uh, time at the moment where we expect US rates um, to rise. We expect uh, a 25 basis point um, uh, rise in uh, US interest rates um, by the end of this year. Uh, but then if we look elsewhere around the world, in the UK, we've seen interest rates cut. So there are differences uh, in the different regions around the world. The continued easing uh, in the majority of, uh, of developed countries, um, as opposed to the US, where we see rates rising, but not rising fast. They're rising slowly. It's not that dramatic, the path of, the, of that increase. Now, over the past years, high-yielding equities have benefited from this low interest rate environment. Um, how do you think high-yielding equities will perform in a current environment? Let's look at Europe to start with. If we look at Europe, uh, we see bond yields, 10-year bond yields in, uh, in Germany at negative um, at the moment. In the US, uh, since the uh, uh, Brexit vote, uh, they've come down to yield around about half a percent. Um, also, and you look at high yielding equities, or let's look at equities as uh, generally, the UK equity market is yielding 4% at the moment, uh, the German market 3%. Uh, so if we can find uh, companies which are paying dividends, which are, which are sustainable, or which can grow as we move forward, then to us, they remain incredibly attractive relative to the fixed interest world. Mm. If we look in the US, uh, where we expect interest rates to rise, Yes, they may rise, but we're expecting them to rise slowly. So consequently, again, those high-yielding equities, if the 
if the dividends are sustainable or are rising, continue to look attractive. So we do not believe it's the end of the road for high yielding equities. We continue to believe that in this low growth, low interest rate um, environment, they remain an attractive investment. Okay. Well, thank you very much for your time, William. And thank you for watching. We'll be back again next month.